All right, welcome to the party. The ongoing adventures of Day Earth Whiskey Bravo. We've just begun our descent on our flight tonight from uh, Chattanooga. Excuse me, I'm sorry, Montgomery County, Georgia. Last night was from Chattanooga to Montgomery County. Now we're taking a flight from uh, Montgomery County, Atlanta, basically, Atlanta, Georgia, down to Biloxi. Biloxi. I think that's how it's pronounced. I heard that somewhere. Not Biloxi. Biloxi, Mississippi. And uh, we've just been given our descent uh, instructions. I'm expecting about a half hour episode here. Uh, we were cruising at flight level 280. We've just been ordered to descend to flight level 16,000. And uh, been an interesting flight. A per beautiful, perfect clear weather, first of all. Been fighting a headwind the whole way, if you notice. 22 knots right now. It's up to about 30 knots. But it's been pretty steady from the west. Uh, so that's slowed us down a little bit. But uh, uh, pleasant flight. Air's been smooth. Had an interesting thing happen. Uh, after I took off, I pressed the V key just to kind of look at the map. If you look here, this is the approach that we're taking. This is where we are right now. And if you look at our approach, we're going to be landing at runway 14 in Biloxi, whose uh, airport code is Kilo Golf Papa Tango. Anyway, I looked at this and it did not look like this. Okay? Now I set up the flight plan and the setup page, but it did not look like this. It, it had this weird teardrop deviation over here, which was clearly just some sort of a screw-up in the sim. So, I, and we'll see how it works out, but I, with a little bit of trepidation, I went and I altered the uh, flight plan. Actually, went to the FPL and uh, entered the waypoints as I knew them to be for a correct ILS approach to runway 14. So that was uh, interesting, but after deleting waypoints that I deemed to be inappropriate and entering the correct waypoints, I knew to be correct for this ILS approach into runway 14, you see that this looks entirely normal. Uh, this is an approach to runway 14. 140 obviously being southeast, 090 is due east, 180 is due south, 140 is southeast. And there you go, you see this uh, route here depicted in white, showing us it's heading west and then making a left turn and heading southeast. So there's no more weird turn. I guarantee if we had left that there, and I know because this has happened before, if we'd left that there uncorrected, it would have screwed up our approach. We, we probably would have been able to handle it, and they would have, uh, you know, managed, but it, it would have been ugly. And this has happened before. I can't remember which airport. It was on one of my approaches into the Caribbean, where it was all botched, and I had to make quick, unexpected adjustments, which I don't like quick, and I don't like unexpected. So, anyway, we're, uh, we'll see if it works, but... Uh, one of the rare times where I had to make adjustments and inputs and deletions, as the case happens, into the FPL flight plan uh, on board, in flight, no less. Uh, so that was interesting. I'm going to go ahead and uh, enter a few other uh, things here while we're descending. Now, come, I did want to check one thing. Uh, the, ATIS is 119.450. That's the weather information we can receive on COM2. I should be able to switch to COM2 by pressing the COM2 button. I'm, I have not yet been able to make it to work, and I, I'm speculating that it might be because uh, I've delegated ATC to the AI. But it's an interesting little minor issue, but I'd, I'd like to be able to access ATIS information. 
Uh, right now, COM1 is on our active ATC frequency. If I try to enter the ATIS frequency of one... <laughs> Oops. No, let's fix it. Let's just do this right now while we're thinking about it. If I try to do it over here, you see what I mean? It doesn't... It doesn't allow me to change the standby frequency. I should be able to click standby, enter 119.45, and switch it over to get ATIS, but it's not working. I think because of the AI thing. Uh, I should also be able to switch to COM2, which is just the second communications frequency. And I'm doing that, and nothing's happened. So it's unfortunate, but uh, I, it's not critical. I just, I'd like to get most current updated weather ob observation information from our arrival airport from someplace other than the internet, but it is what it is. Okay, so meanwhile, let's go ahead and uh, set up our NAV1 and set up our ILS frequency for runway 14, which I happen to know is 110.9. Enter that. We'll set up NAV2, which is the VOR DME frequency for the area, and I checked on the map and the VOR is at the airport, so that's nice. 109.0. Now that we've entered those frequencies, we'll go over to the PFD settings, bearing one, nav, bearing two, nav two, and you can see GPT is the code for the VOR DME transmitter, radio transmitter, at Gulfport at Biloxi, and it's showing us 56 miles from the airport, uh, which is, uh, we're actually a little farther from the airport because we're not headed straight to the airport. Remember, we're making this, this right here, this turn. So if we were just going straight from here to the airport for 56 miles, but my fourth flight app is telling me I'm actually 81 miles, and that's because I'm making this turn in this approach, so uh, that should make sense. That's Mobile, Alabama out there, over which we're flying. Go ahead and enter our minimums as well right now. Minimums on this approach are 560. Make sure it's barometric. 560, enter. Now that appears over here as our barometric minimums. Uh, and um, obviously we have no data on the ILS transmitter. That's to be expected. We're too far from it, and we don't need it anyway. The ILS instrument landing system is only is only needed for approach, not approach and, and lining up for final and so forth. In other words, for short distance, shorter distances. No one would have an ILS approach for when you're 60 miles out. Go ahead and descend to 4,000. Here's speed's 206. Looking good. Descend to 1,500 feet per minute. And you know, uh, if you've watched my episodes, I'm always constantly referring to our next waypoint. Here you can see K, or excuse me, SJI, not KSJI. SJI. Zoom in here a little bit and you can really see. SJI is our next waypoint, and SJI is specifically 63 seconds from us. We're five miles from it. Uh, after SJI is Squid, and then Bugle, and Sesa, or Sesa, I think is how you pronounce it. Sesa happens to be the initial approach fix for uh, this airport. The uh, approach plates, you know I'm a big fan of approach plates. I use them. They're extremely helpful. The approach plate for this airport was... Now we're getting contradictory uh, descent instructions. We were told to do fourth, now we're being told to do five. Regardless, it's no problem. As I was saying, the approach plate for this airport is not very detailed. Um, the only altitude instruction that I could find on the approach plate was that we needed to be at 2,000 feet at the initial approach fix, CESA, or CAISA, CESA, CESA, whatever. Anyway, right there, we need to be at 2,000 feet. 
it's not near not nearly as detailed as some of the step down instructions i've got at some of the from some of the other approach plates but it's something to go on i'm intensely interested to see how etc handles my modified approach i i should have not fixed the flight plan in sim until after i started recording just so you could have seen what this looked like before right now this looks kind of normal right well before it looked like a goddamn shoelace it was like this and then this and i mean it would have been a shit show so we'll see how it handles it but lucky again we've got great weather throttle back a little bit more approaching a bugle right now showing 63 miles to our destination and an estimate of 14 minutes to landing time obviously as i've said before that's at our current speed so it's probably more like 17 maybe 18 minutes but we're monitoring things the uh barometer the altimeter uh, is still set at 29902 i do need to adjust that but I have, I, if they've given me updated altimeter information, I missed it. Let's take a look at our communication history and see if there's any reference to, to it. 3004, very good. So we'll go ahead and uh, adjust our altimeter to 3004. Right now it's a 299 or 2, which is standard altimeter above 18,000 change it to 3004 and uh, now you see it's set at 3004 I'll press the B key again just as a cross check and it's I press the B key and it stayed at 3004 so we're good headed to Bugle you see Bugle's our next waypoint we are 43 seconds from Bugle and then we'll make a slight right turn I think that's that right there. I think maybe our airport. No, actually it's not. That's KBIX. Taking that slight right turn I just referenced. Oh, maybe that's KBIX. Yeah, maybe our airport. I don't know. I'm not clear. We're still a little far. We're By a bayou transition. It's funny how they tell you to maintain present heading and altitude, but I, I can't maintain my present heading and altitude. I need to continue my descent to the goddamn altitude they told me to descend to, which was 5,000 feet. Anyway, it's uh, I'm following their instructions, which was to descend to 5,000 feet. Right now, we're headed to CASA, C-A-S-A-A, -A -A, Charlie Alpha Echo, Sierra Alpha. I'm showing that CASA is... 8 minutes and 17 seconds away. Let's do our math. We're doing descending at 1,200 feet per minute. What did I tell you we needed to be at at Kesa? 2,000. We need to be at 2,000 at Kesa. We're at 9,000 now. We're 8 minutes away. How about you? But I'll do the math. We're descending at 8 minutes. It takes, it takes us 8 minutes to get there. And we're at 9,000 feet right now. Then uh, descending at a thousand feet per minute would mean that we were eight thousand feet low, or lower than we are now, which would put us at one thousand, not two thousand feet at Kesa. So I've shallowed out our descent rate slightly to eight hundred feet per minute, which will get us to Kesa at two thousand feet. Once we get to Kesa, look on the VFR map, so we can zoom in a little bit more. We're going this way right now. Once we get to Kesa, we'll make a left turn and do our final approach. All I know for certain is that we need to be at 2,000 feet at Kesa. Uh, however, I have uh, already programmed in the uh, 
ILS information. And we are now receiving, although not DME information, I'm not getting information about how far we are from IGBT, India Golf Papa Tango, which is the ILS call sign. Um, see, here's GPT. That's how far we are from the VOR DME, which is stationed at the airport. This is IGPT, which is the ILS radio frequency. I'd like to see distance from that location. Notice this now several times since the most recent, the most recent patch. Uh, but uh, we're okay. We're okay. Uh, ultimately, having distance information is useful, but not critical because I have distance information anyway on my ForeFlight app. What I absolutely need, however, is glide slope information. Glide slope information is what enables me to allow the autopilot to handle the approach to the ILS runway 14. A few other uh, things to note. Approach course for Gulfport uh, runway 14 ILS is 137. Let's go ahead and set that now on our heading bug. 137. You see, when I move this, the uh, cyan-colored bug on the compass heading moves as well. So now it's over here, you see, and that gives us an idea of the orientation of the runway, which, if you look at this, is entirely consistent. We're going this way, then we're going to turn left. Well, if we're going this way and we turn left, you'll see we're lined up with that. Our missed approach information, if we need it, is uh, to climb to 2,000 feet, make a right turn to 245. I think the uh, intersection towards which we head is Mudda. But I don't think we're going to need anything when it comes to that on this flight. Because the weather's perfect. But remember, missed approaches uh, can be triggered not only by bad weather or failing to be in visual contact with the runway at minimums, but also by whatever, runway incursion, uh, last minute flight emergency uh, on board your own aircraft, whether airplane cuts in front of you, whatever. Uh, so it's always good to be prepared for a missed approach. Uh, we're still descending uh, at 700 feet per minute. We're at 6,000 feet right now. We are five minutes from Kesa. Remember what I said, what altitude do we need to be at in Kesa? 2,000 feet. For five minutes from Kesa, 700 feet per minute times 500 feet, five, times five minutes is 3,500 feet. We're at 5,800 feet minus 3,500 feet puts us at about 2,300 feet. So we'll increase our descent rate just a hair uh, to assure that we are at 2,000 feet at Kesa. Things going well right now. Still very interested to see how the sim handles the fact that I modified the flight plan in sim. Almost never do that. Happily, I almost never have to do that uh, because uh, the setup page inside uh, Microsoft Flight Simulator 2020 gets it right. Today, however, it did not get it right and it gave me a shoelace knot mess of an approach which wouldn't have worked out. Our minimums, as I already mentioned, are 560. Our approach course is 137. Airport elevation is 29 feet. This airport is 29 feet above sea level. Runway length, 9,000 feet. Plenty of space to land. Always good to know what your runway length is. You know, you have a short runway. you got to keep that in mind. You know, you might have to do it with the, what I, I've heard referred to as a Navy landing, where you just have to stick it aircraft carrier. Get that airplane on the ground or on the boat in the Navy context of that word. That's our runway right there, I suspect. Uh, but a 9,000 foot long runway on an airplane that's doing 85 knots on final and touchdown is the ultimate in reassurance. We'll make sure our uh, half bank is uh, deactivated it's activated above 18,000 feet transition altitude, but uh, you do need to plan for that because if you have half bank activated, which affects 
how steeply the aircraft can turn left or right, it will obviously have an impact on our ability to make this turn. It's just like a car. If you can't turn very sharply, it's going to take you longer to turn. We're down to 5,000. We've stopped descending. They haven't cleared us to continue descending, but they also cleared us to the bayou transition. We need to be at 2,000 feet in 2 minutes and 34 seconds. So we're at 5,000 feet right now, and I've just ordered us to descend. And well, there you go. <laughs> it's funny when it happens like that. It, it makes me feel good because uh, when I uh, nail it like that, it's 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 proof that I'm getting it. You know, and there's so much I still don't get about this sim. There's still so much about it. It's so complicated, and I want to learn, and I want to get better. Uh, but when something like that happens, as it just did, it, it, it makes you feel good. Because uh, I recognize that we needed to continue our descent. And I also mentioned we need to go to 2,000 feet. And sure enough, that's what we were declared to. I'm going to set our uh, approach altitude to minimum of 560. Keep in mind, we were uh, ordered to descend to... Or not descend, but rather... We were cleared direct to um, Bayou which is somewhere on this approach. There it is, by you. But I've elected to just stick with the flight plan that I modified according to the approach I know to be correct for uh, ILS runway 14. So we're gonna make our left turn when we get to Quesa. It's depicted a little more differently uh, here because it's showing the turn, but basically what we're doing is this and then bang making that left turn And as I said, if you don't have half bank on If you have half bank on it's going to take the airplane a lot longer to make that left turn Half bank is deactivated though at this point Remember we need to be at 2,000 feet at Quesa 2,000 feet at Quesa and we're now at 2,300 feet, and we're making our left turn, so we're fine, just fine. Here's the left turn. Big left turn. The runway's out there somewhere. Should see the REILs, -E the runway and instrument lighting here momentarily. To be. Uh, runway and identifier lights I think is what it's actually called. We're going to slow us down here a little bit more, activate our inertial separator, and uh, there's the runway. It's a hell of a turn here that we're making. This airplane's going to continue compensating for it. Shallow outer descent rate here. Don't want to come in too low. going awfully fast, so slow us down, showing us uh, still 15 miles from the airport, so we'll just hold here at our current altitude. Airplane's going to turn right here as it continues to intercept. Master, acknowledge Master Caution. Go ahead and get our landing lights on. Golfer Tree, Whiskey, Volvo, Euro, 15 miles, northwest of Gulf Port. Contact Gulfport Tower on ONE-E-2-3-decimal-7 when inbound. Showing us just three minutes... Three minutes from, uh, our next waypoint. And six minutes from landing. Gulfport Tower, Dumber, November Tree, Fort Tree, Whiskey, Bravo, one four miles northwest inbound. Remember the IAF, the initial approach fix of Quesa is 2,000 feet. We're at 1,400 feet right now. Fort Tree, Whiskey, Bravo, Gulfport Tower. Cleared IRS. So we're clear to land. I'm sorry, we're clear for the approach. 0 2 9 at 6. 0 2 9 Interesting. That's interesting. 0 2 9 is about here, but the winds right now are coming at us. We'll see if this shifts 
a little bit more to our left. In any event, now's the time to uh, go ahead and activate the approach. You'll see uh, the glide slope diamond is white and still high, which I would expect normal. We've activated the approach now. And we'll switch this over to nav one, since we are lined up. Now, on final, when you see NAV1 IGPT India Golf Papa Tango 110.90 is the ILS frequency. The route the airplane is flying now is not and is no longer the GPS route that was pre programmed in. Now, it happens to still look the same, but that's because the GPS route that we implemented was the approach for runway 14 on the ILS. This uh, turned from magenta to green and says lock one, localizer one. And this green line right here is perfectly aligned both with the underlying blue arrow, which is the arrow that is pointing towards the VOR DME, but also it's perfectly aligned with the green arrow just above and the green line just below. If we were not lined up with the runway, this green line here called the CDI, the course deviation indicator, would be off to the left or off to the right. The green diamond here, it's turned green now because we've uh, selected approach and activated the GPS, I'm sorry, the ILS frequency on the PFD through NAV1 nav source. Is The green diamond is high, meaning we are beneath the glide slope, which is what you want. You don't want to have to chase the glide slope down you want to have the glide slope above you and then fly into it. I've thought about the glide slope as like a, a slide at a... Uh, Landing gear. Landing gear. Slow down just a little bit more. That alarm comes in whenever you slow down and throttle back a lot. Uh, because the airplane thinks, are you about to land? If you are, put your gear down. Uh, anyway, I've thought about it as a slide in a playground. We will go ahead and put our gear down now. We are uh, just six miles from the runway. Um, I thought about it as at a sli like a slide at a playground. Uh, you want to... Uh, clear to land runway 14. Clear to land runway Green diamond moving down. It's already past the first dot. We'll do flaps one. When it gets to number two, we'll do flaps clear two. Clear to land runway 14. Dollar tree whiskey Bravo. Flaps two. Landing lights are on. We're good. Anyway, just picture you want to be on that slide, and when you get to the bottom of that slide, that's where you want to land in the sand. That's what a glide slope is. And it's now grabbed the glide slope. I don't know if you caught it. This turned green. So this is going swimmingly. I'm especially pleased, and of course, there's the uh, the runway. I'm as that's beautiful. Wow, the lighting. I'm especially pleased that my in-flight modifications, deletions and additions to the flight plan worked. I mean, they worked perfectly, and this is really encouraging to the extent that I'm getting more comfortable inputting flight plan data in SIM. You know, it's, it's, it's very intimidating. I mean, two months ago, I didn't know how to do this, <laughs> how to input a mile final. How to input a flight plan into a Garmin G3000? Yeah, I mean, I think you're crazy. It's just, I never would have known how to do that. So it's encouraging. I'm proof of concept that it is possible. Okay, we look good. We'll do the do our Gifley checklist. Gear, confirm. Uh, inertial separator, activated. Flaps, full. Fuel, definitely uh, running low. With 16 on the left, 18 on the right. We're okay. Lights activated and yaw damper. We'll deactivate that now on short final. 87 knots. Airspeed could not be better. I'm telling you, I, I haven't landed yet, but this is about as good an approach and land. Yeah, well, <laughs> I haven't landed. As good an approach as I've done uh, so far. So anyway, beautiful airport right in front of us. Beautiful runway right in front of us. Airspeed's perfect at 87 knots. 500 AGL, autopilot, disengaged. We are below minimums. Airport in sight. I have the airplane. That 
wind is just from our left at five knots, six knots. Not a tailwind per se, but again, if you do this you, and you give up, or not give up, but you deactivate the autopilot, you're not on your own. You can continue to use the instruments to handle your approach. Watch the green diamond. Uh, middle marker indicator. Watch that green diamond on your PFD. It'll tell you if you're too high or too low. I see no Vazis or Poppies on this approach, so you really need to depend on your instruments to tell you if you're high or low enough. Not so much in good conditions like this, but in clouds, that's all that you could have to help you. All right, here we go. Idle. Flare. We'll take that. Got that wind pushing us here a little bit. Reverse thrusters. Basically, don't use your reverse thrusters beneath 40 knots. Don't need your reverse thrusters before beneath 40 knots. So they're turning us to turn, telling us to turn next taxiway. I'm not seeing any taxi ribbons. So looks like we'll have to do this the old-fashioned way. We'll zoom in here on the. Uh... Oh, what the? Well, there is no taxiway on the. Looks like our next taxiway is uh, a runway. That's interesting. Hmm. I'm with you, baby. Bring our flaps in here. Well, oh, there's the there's the taxi ribbon. Okay. Well, as I had postulated, there was no off ramp, so to speak. If you look over here, until right here. Okay. Flaps retracted. Make our turn. Use those toe brakes. Use those pedals. Take my foot, my hand off the Number flight stick. All right, we'll stop right here at this line. You can see it right here, One, two, zero, and also we just passed over Bravo. it. Contact ground. And as taxi to parking. I could not be Delta happier with how that went. Taxi pulls lights off. Let's see if this changes. Oh, Christ. Alright, so I was hoping that our parking would be right here in front of us. And it's not far away, but this is an excellent example of why I use the taxi ribbons. Uh, you know, if uh, the sim had labels on those taxiways, which some of them do, some of them don't. But and by that, by what I mean by that is that, like, see how that says Alpha, the A. They don't all have that stuff. Now, right now I have to cross a runway, which is fine. I can cross a runway. Got to look both ways, of course, just like crossing the street. You know, but I, but to, to, to the, the idea of trying to navigate this uh, without these taxi ribbons, I just, when I don't have reliable uh, labeling on the in sim at the airport it's just not realistic i mean some airports you land and it's make one left turn and you're parked uh, others are more complicated and this is obviously an example you can act, i mean you don't take my word for it look at the look at the airport i mean you know it's a mess turns everywhere intersections everywhere airplanes airports runways taxiways i mean it's you know, like a big 
ball of spaghetti. So we're going to make our left turn here, and we'll cross the runway we just landed on. I guess if I'd uh, been able to stop faster, we might have been able to make a right turn, but it, as it happened, again, completely unfamiliar with this airport, completely unfamiliar with this area. Uh, as it happened, by the time we were at a safe speed to turn off the runway, we had already passed the last available option. We were told to cross it, but I'll still look just to make sure nobody's coming in. No one is. This is the runway we just landed on. Again, you can actually see it here. Zoom in even a little bit more. That's where we just landed. So ideally, I would have turned here or here. But by the time I was in a position to turn, we'd already passed those two off ramps, so to speak, requiring us to take the next available one, which was over here, turn left, make a U-turn, and head back. So that just is how it is. It's not the end of the world. I see our parking space coming up over here. I think I see Gary's shadow. There he is. Look for the flashlights. Light them up. Light up the flashlights, Gary. Turn our taxi lights off so we don't blind the poor guy. Slow us down. Make our left turn. To park. Got us doing a pretty sharp U-turn here, but it uh, should be manageable. Toe brakes are absolutely essential. Now let's see if there's Gary. There he is. There we go. All right. And there you can see we are on the MFD. That's where we parked. So again, just by way of illustration, if I been a little more familiar I would have tried like hell to turn here or turn here and then the parking job would have been a lot easier but as it happened we landed past those because we were still going too fast for me to make the right turn and they brought us all the way down here this way this way this way and that way regardless went well parking brake Commercial separator off, pedo heat off, engine high idle, low idle, and cut off. Fuel tank selector off. Acknowledge master alarm and master caution. Deactivate, EP off, trim off, fuel selector to normal. OxVP is already deactivated after we did our startup. And strobe and nav also. Acknowledge alarm and depressurize. All right, well, we're in Biloxi. Beautiful night out, 16 degrees out. A little chilly, 16 degrees. I need to get better at uh, metric because that's what they use in, uh, in aviation. 61 degrees outside, cool night. Winds, again, out of the... Uh, what was it? Six degrees. Actually, you can check that if you ever want to adjust it. The other PFT settings. Wind option three will give you the direction the wind is coming from. Zero, one, zero degrees. So east, no, excuse me, north, northeast. Anyway, we're on the ground. Things are good. Biloxi, never been here. Would like to go there, but I haven't. And things went smoothly. I mean, it really, this was a, a red letter date because I don't remember a scenario where I noticed a problem with the, you know, the, the, the flight plan set up by the sim, was able to correct it by deleting erroneous inputs and inputting the correct inputs, and it still 
handled the approach and landing perfectly. So the ongoing bug fixes continue. We're 40 minutes into my half hour episode. I'll stop. Uh, but uh, that was a great flight. Really a fantastic flight. And things went really, really well. So uh, we're in Biloxi for the night. I got to find a hotel. That's it. Good night.